Welcome to our video. Active combat action will finish by the end of the year, claims Ukraine's intelligence chief. I would like tentatively to share part if the contents of the Weon News video report. After months of uncertainty over the timeline of the Russian invasion, there is finally some clarity over when the war is expected to end. The head of Ukraine's military intelligence has now said that the majority of fighting will be over by the end of the year. He says that the turning point in the conflict with Russia would come in the second part of August and also claims that the Russian President Vladimir Putin is in a very bad psychological and physical condition. Listen in. Переломний момент наступить в другій половині серпня. Більша частина активних дій, воєнних дій, завершиться до кінця цього року. Рух в цьому напряму вже розпочався і його вже неможливо зупинити. On the other hand, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has said that it is hard to predict for how long the war would last. He also said that the West has announced a total hybrid war against Russia. Lavrov added that efforts made by the West to isolate Russia were doomed to fail. The collective West has announced a total hybrid war. And it is difficult to predict how long it will last, but it is clear Последствия почувствуют все без исключения. Мы делали все, чтобы избежать прямого столкновения, но раз вызов брошен, мы его, конечно, принимаем. К санкциям нам не привыкать. В том или ином виде они были практически всегда. Ukrainian military forces released footage showing destroyed Russian military vehicles. The video appears to show several burnt out military vehicles and a bridge broken into several parts. Ukraine says that these images were taken along the Donets River. Britain's defense ministry said that it seems that Russia lost armored maneuver elements of at least one battalion tactical group at this river. Let's now take a look at what is happening on ground. The invasion has caused immense damage to human life, of course. In a bone-chilling video, Ukrainian soldiers were seen loading refrigerated train wagons with bodies of dead Russian soldiers in Kyiv. An agreement to transfer bodies remains unresolved. Це декілька сотень тіл окупантів. Таких составів є декілька по території України. Зберігатися вони будуть тут до тих пір, поки не буде на міждержавному рівні прийнято рішення про передачу цих тіл. Українська сторона готова віддати їх вже завтра або навіть сьогодні. Проте звернень щодо отримання цих тіл російською стороною на даний час не було. Meanwhile, Ukraine's president has now said that talks are underway on evacuation of medical professionals and wounded fighters from the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol. He said that mediators are doing everything they can to ensure a safe passage of those who are still inside the plant. Не припиняємо намагання рятувати з Маріуполя та з усталі усіх наших людей. Наразі продовжуються дуже складні перемовини про наступний етап евакуаційної місії вивезення важкопоранених медиків. Йдеться про велику кількість людей. Звичайно, робимо все, щоб евакуювати і усіх інших, кожного нашого захисника і захисницю. Вже заділи для відповідних переговорів усіх світів, хто може бути найбільш впливовими посередниками. Now for more insights on the Russia-Ukraine war and if a probable end could be in sight at this point, joining us now with more insight is uh, Ruslan Botnik, the director of the Ukrainian Institute of Politics. He joins us now from Kyiv. Uh, Ruslan, welcome to Beyond World as One. Hello, colleagues. Now, Kyiv's head of military intelligence has clearly said that the war in Ukraine could reach a breaking point by August and end in defeat for Russia before the end of the year. What are your predictions and assessment of the situation? Of course, I would like to believe in this information and they would like to stop this war just now, not only in the end of August. But uh, talking about this statement of Ukrainian intelligence service, I think there are few reasons for this statement. The first reason, of course, it's a new American law for land lease for Ukraine 
which give uh, American President Joe Biden enhanced authority to support Ukraine by the different type of uh, the modern weapon and uh, resources, supply, military supplies, and so on, for a general sum of uh, 40 billion or United States dollars. And uh, the second reason, and, uh, and of course, in Ukraine, intelligence service of Ukraine uh, uh, thinks uh, that uh, this, uh, this help with, will make a big influence on, on the situation in the battle, battlefields uh, in the east of Ukraine uh, till the August, and Ukraine will uh, uh, obtain such weapons, will uh, take the victory on, the, on these battlefields in the August. Right. The second, uh, the second reason is also important. Uh, it's a reason of hope. Uh, of, uh, you, it's not easy to live today in Ukraine. It's very, it's not good uh, social economical situation, uh, situation with the security, and of course, Ukrainian society asking about the uh, final view uh, of this conflict. And uh, these dates. Uh, of, uh, it, it, it means that uh, Ukrainian government, Ukrainian intelligence service uh, are sure that uh, the war will stop in August and uh, all Ukrainians uh, should uh, uh, wait uh, only this time, not many, many years. It's, right. uh, Response, so, okay. just, just interjecting right there, I have a very quick question for you, a follow-up to what yeah. you're talking about. There are indications that there is a timeline as to when this war could end. That is something that the world is interested in. But the scenes on ground suggest otherwise, given the Russian aggression. Do you think this war will end according to the timeline predicted? Unfortunately, I, I don't. I, 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 haven't, uh, I, I don't see any uh, reasons uh, for which war will, should stop nearest months. I think uh, Ukraine uh, uh, has enough resources, and Russia, unfortunately, too, has enough resources to continue this war many, many years. And only peace negotiations, only international arbitration for, uh, for, from the most powerful countries from around the world should stop this war. Uh, and I don't think another way. Moreover, uh, nowadays, negotiation between the sides are, uh, are also degrading all the time, and we see, we we don't see any um, real result of this negotiation. Moreover, we don't see all the sides of this conflict around the table. Only Ukraine and Russia talking between themselves, but United States, Europe, Union are out of this table, and this, uh, it means uh, there is uh, any any agreement is in, it's impossible for nowadays. Of right. course, we understand. Of course, we understand that the war uh, will go down after the sides of conflict will exhaust, uh, exhaust will exhaust their resources, and uh, so war should, should go up and down, up and down. But this situation should continue a very long time. Right. Ruslan, thanks so much for all those insights. Thanks for joining us on this broadcast Thank from you. Kiev. And now, of course, for the other side of the story and perspectives from the other side, joining us now is Omit Nazmi Hazir, the political scientist who joins us now from Moscow and Russia. Omit, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much for your invitation. By now, the way, I want the I Russian forget. perspective in all of this. In your expertise, when will this war end and who stands to lose what at this point in the war? Uh, I think, uh, from my perspective, the war will be long, uh, will be lasting for a long time because, uh, first of all, negotiations are not uh, going well as we wish, and what's more, there is no reason uh, to come to end in the war. And on the other hand, uh, it is also early to say whether Russia or Ukraine uh, has succeeded uh, in the war yet. Uh, and uh, that's why I think the war will be lasting uh, for months. It is more than August or maybe it could take uh, more than a year, I guess. So do you agree to the stipulated timeline that has been predicted at this point, that the war may end at this timeline predicted? And who do you think stands to lose and who do you think stands to win? No, I don't think, uh, I don't think, I, I do not, I totally do not agree with this uh, timeline. 
uh, we cast that first of all Russia must gain something in order to uh, come to peace because the war also very cost uh, for Russia and for another thing in March I was more hopeful because in March there were some negotiations face to face negotiations uh, one of them uh, was held in Istanbul and both sides after the negotiations following the negotiations in Istanbul both sides expressed some uh, positive signals and messages however after April uh, it changed and uh, the situation uh, has become more and more worse than the beginning of uh, in the beginning of March and the negotiations right now face to face are not held uh, it is one of the reasons because in order to achieve in order to come to uh, peace and in order to end the war you must have negotiations however currently negotiations the negotiations are not uh, had it is uh, I think it is important reason right absolutely just a final question there uh, what's happening in Russia and the comments coming from Russia are very different when it comes to talking about a resolution to this conflict we've heard the Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov say that the West has announced a total hybrid war against Russia and it is hard to predict how long it will last. Lavrov also said that the implications of the same would be felt everywhere. Is this a kind of an ominous warning in your uh, estimation? Uh, according to official discourse and rhetoric of Russia, they always accuse of the West because uh, Russia claims that the West wants uh, this war uh, going on and the West, especially the United States, uh, is taking advantage of this war. It is the official discourse, official position of Russia. And uh, for another thing, uh, as far as you know, that Russia has changed the strategy of the war. Because in the beginning of the war, Russia uh, was targeting to capture northern Ukraine and uh, Russian troops, uh, military troops, uh, were settled around uh, Kiev. However, uh, in one month ago, almost one month ago, Russia has changed the strategy and Russia withdrew troops from uh, around Kiev and uh, northern Ukraine. And Russia right now is focusing on eastern uh, Ukraine and uh, especially Donbas region. And right. for another thing, Russia is targeting to reach southern Ukraine. It means that Russia wants to continue uh, this war and Russia wants to capture more than a more uh, territory in Ukraine. Right, Humit. Thanks so much for all your perspectives and insights. Thanks for joining us on Beyond World Thank as you one very much at this hour. For your invitation. Beyond World is one is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.